At last, the bridge started looking almost like a bridge. Effectively, what we had was a girder that could sit on top of a pier, and it would be like a T. And the whole bridge just consisted of 44 Ts. But the length of that girder was about 192 meters long, and our span was 250 meters long. And we had uh, determined that 192 meters was really about the longest girder we wanted to make. So after we set our pier base and our pier shaft, and we put our girder on top, we ended up with a small gap in between. And the, uh, the heavy lift vessel would then come and set the dropping girders. It demanded the Svanen, at 35 stories, one of the world's largest floating cranes, to carry components from shore to the bridge site. But even this crane wasn't large enough. Though the Svanen can lift 8,200 tons, its height had to be extended to 100 meters to reach the top of the piers. The biggest component within that bridge was our main girder. Our main girder was about 190 meters long, which is the better part of two football fields long. Uh, it weighed in the order of 8,000 metric tons. And this crane was so efficient, it could pick up one of these 8,000 ton pieces and set it in place every single day, depending on the weather conditions. The Svanen depended on the global positioning system to precisely place each of the bridge pieces. The vessel and bridge components were fitted with antennae to communicate with the GPS satellite in space. We put GPS antennas at the ends of the main girder so we can determine the position and the orientation of the, uh, the main girder. So we transport it out to location. We move the, uh, the Swanen onto uh, its exact position and adjust the exact position of the Swanen using the GPS antennas. 